Hey Audacious Church, hope you are well. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you are watching this. My name is Nav and I'm part of the North Location Leadership Team. So today I have the privilege and the honour to share today's devotional with you. And uh, I've been asked to share my favourite verse or verses with you. But I've decided just to be um, just a little uh, rebellious. And so I'm not going to share my favourite verses with you, but I'm going to share verses with you, especially one word in these verses that I'm going to share that I'm not so keen on. So let's see if you can actually pick that out while, while I just go over these verses. So the verses that we're looking at are Psalm 27 verse 14, Psalm 40 verse 1, and Psalm 37 verse 7. So Psalm 27 verse 14 says, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Psalm 40 verse 1 says, I waited patiently for the Lord. And Psalm 37 verse 7 says, be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. I'm sure you've picked up, up, picked up on that word already. And that word is wait. I don't know about you, but I do not like or enjoy waiting whatsoever. And just a couple of months back, I waited for over nine hours. I waited for over nine hours with a friend who was, um, who was in a me because he injured himself. And I do not like waiting. But just looking at these verses, I just wanted to delve deeper into the word waiting and what it actually means. And um, I have the privilege and the honour of working with the amazing Dr. Glenn Balfour um, in college who actually teaches uh, the Hebrew and Greek. So I went, o- went over to Glenn and I said, Glenn, what does waiting actually mean in scripture? And Glenn said, waiting actually means to be patient. So waiting means to be patient. I was just looking in the dictionary um, and the dictionary says that patience is to be able to accept or tolerate delays, problems or suffering without becoming annoyed or anxious. So to be able to accept or tolerate delays, problems or suffering without becoming annoyed or anxious. I don't know about you, but I get pretty annoyed and I get pretty anxious uh, whilst waiting. And just thinking about being patient, what sort of scenarios in life do we really need to be patient in? Do I need to be patient in? And those scenarios are mainly things that are out of my control, things that are out of your control. But as Christians, we can be patient in hope. We can be patient in hope. So the next thing I just want to look at is that how we can be active whilst waiting. How we can be active whilst waiting. So to actively do the things that are in our control, the things that we can actually do that we should do. For example, if I'm going somewhere where I know that I'm going, I'm going to end up in a waiting room, whether that's in a dentist or opticians, I will take my laptop or phone or whatever with me. And so then I can just work during the waiting and, and tick off things off my to-do list and actively working in the areas that I, don't, that I actually do have control over. And it makes waiting much easier and time actually flies. But the main thing that I really want to look at that really convicted me for doing this devotional and, and speaking about waiting is that sometimes we can get comfortable in the waiting. Waiting can actually become comfortable because it doesn't require much effort from ourselves. It doesn't require much effort from me or you. You just sit, you're just sitting in a waiting room. And sometimes you kind of view um, the waiting when, it, when we look into scripture, when we say we're waiting for the Lord as, as we're sitting and waiting for him to act, but we, we not doing anything ourselves. So it can, it can become comfortable. And then if we need to do something, that can be uncomfortable because it takes effort to actually do. And it could be also that once we've waited and we feel like we're waiting for the Lord, sometimes I feel this, that I've waited for the Lord and now whatever whatever I've waited for is just going to get handed to me. 
But God is in the business of building character. He's in the business of growing and stretching us. And, and, and he does give handouts, but he's more about building character, stretching and growing. I've said many a time, and um, speaking to other people and other Christians, I've, always, I've said, oh, I'm in the season of waiting. And I hear it many a time from other Christians that, oh, I'm in the season of actually, I'm, I'm waiting. But none of us, especially, I've never heard it. I've not even heard myself say it until now that I'm in the season of doing. We hear a lot about the season of waiting, but we don't hear much about the season of actually doing. So I just have a couple of questions for you as I finish off. And the questions are, are you waiting because it's comfortable? Are you waiting because it's comfortable? Or are you actually waiting? Or are you meant to be doing? Are you actually waiting or are you meant to be doing? Are you meant to be waiting right now or are you meant to be doing? What can you do today that you can get closer to that goal or get closer to that promise that the Lord has for you. He's going to fulfill it, but what can you do during that time? So what are you actually waiting for? Is it marriage? Then if it's marriage that you're waiting for, then what are you doing to prepare yourself whilst you're single? If it's a job that you are waiting to get, then what are you doing to educate or upskill yourself in order to get that job? If it's finances, how are you stewarding what you already have? And lastly, if it's health, have you even looked into changing your nutrition or starting to even exercise or joining a gym or whatever that you need to do in order to achieve that goal? I wanted to share today's devotional with you about waiting just because it's convicted me of looking into areas of my life that need work on, that I need to be working during that time. See, we are actually in a relationship with God and a relationship is a two-way thing. You give, you get, you, you give and you get. You have to give, there's times to give, there's times to get. There's a conversation that happens in in a relationship. Just as a parent, just as a dad or a mom playing catch with, with, with their son or daughter in the garden, there's a time when the father or the mother has to throw the ball. But then there's also a time in order to keep that game going is when the son or the daughter needs to throw the ball back. So there's time for the parent to do and there's also a time for the child also to do. So my final question to you is this. Are you waiting on God? Are you waiting on God? Or is God waiting on you? Are you waiting on God or is God waiting on you? Is it his move next or is it your move next? Hey church, I'm just going to leave it there with you to think about and to ponder over. But it's been great spending this time with you. And I just want to just bless your week that you have an amazing week and weekend ahead. And I look forward to seeing you in church. So have a blessed week. Have a blessed time. And I will speak to you soon. Take care. Bye, church.